Hey guys, so as you probably know if you've been following this channel for the past few days that Ubuntu have released final betas of their various brands of operating system. Now I've already looked at Ubuntu and one of my personal favorites, Lubuntu, so today I'm going to be looking at Zubuntu. Now Zubuntu is practically the same as Ubuntu but with one big discerning difference and that is that it uses the XFCE desktop which has seen a surge in popularity since Ubuntu decided to adopt uh, Unity as its user interface and as you can tell if you've already seen my review I'm not particularly impressed by it so it'll be interesting to see how Zubuntu stacks up as well as the software it comes bundled with. Now a little bit of background um, you, uh, Unity and Ubuntu, of course, the flagship distributions, they include everything which you'd expect to see from an Ubuntu distribution, or at least everything which Ubuntu and Canonical want to show you. And Lubuntu is, um, in terms of its uh, weight and in terms of its system resource use and everything, it's down the other end of the scale. It uses very few system resources. It's very light. You can install it on practically any machine that will run, say, Windows XP or even maybe something as old as, say, Windows 98, possibly. And... Um, and Zubuntu and XFCE, when it comes to the use of system resources, fall somewhere in the middle. If you've got a really, really old computer, uh, Lubuntu and LXDE might be the way to go because they just use so few system resources. In fact, I have no problem using Lubuntu on a state-of-the-art machine just because of the speed and the user interface itself. But some people do appreciate the usability, maybe not necessarily of Unity, but say of GNOME or KDE, um, which I will be looking at in due course. But this is... Uh, designed to be a desktop which is somewhat full featured um, and still graphically appealing and comes with a decent software bundle but isn't say as bloated as KDE, GNOME or Unity. So um, I'm going to try it uh, because the final beta uh, at least in regards to the virtual machine that, which I test this software in is um, incapable of actually having an install which boots effectively like like I say, this is a final beta, which means that there are still a few tweaks that uh, Canonical and Ubuntu a sort of working out. It's not specific to Zubuntu, it seems to be specific to all of the Ubuntu distributions, um, so um, that doesn't really sort of fall into the remit of, of this particular uh, brand of Ubuntu distribution. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got the live CD, which works perfectly fine, and also includes uh, the same kind of software bundle that you see in a final installed version. In fact, this is a pretty good um, a pretty good example of what you can expect. The only thing that I'm unable to really show you is the install process, but um, judging, well, judging from what I've managed to get through so far in the install process, it's near identical to the uh, previous uh, long-term support release, which was released six months ago, which I also did reviews of on this channel. So feel free to uh, you know, look back if you want to have a look at how difficult the install process is. Uh, to me, it's, it's particularly easy um, as long as you stay away from the disk partitioning. Um, and you don't need to worry too much about disk partitioning if you're new to it and if you've got a dedicated Linux machine. Um, I probably will do a video at some point talking about disk partitioning because it's useful, it's just not, say, mandatory or, or necessary um, if you're particularly new to uh, to uh, Linux and Ubuntu. And, of course, if you're anything like me, you back up most of your important work, or all of your important work, most of your overall work, to the uh, to the cloud anyway. So if your hard disk goes down, or if you, for some reason, need to um, switch out your hard disk for something new, then you'll, you're still sort of all right anyway without having to worry about recovering home partitions and stuff like that. Anyway, without further ado, let's have a look at the old uh, uh, um, Zubuntu here. So Zubuntu 14.10, of course. I can't remember if I mentioned that at the beginning of this video, but of course it'll be in the old title. Uh, love the background wallpaper just off, off the bat. Um, I love what they did with it. Looks very nice. Uh, like the dark uh, bar at the top. Um, but it looks all pretty standard XFCE practice. Now it's got the uh, the icons there, and of course it's got it's got like a magenta kind of hint to it. Now it's always kind of a little bit difficult whether or not these little things will be altered for the final release. So you know, I've obviously bear that in mind with final criticism. But it should be like a reasonable snapshot of the final uh, distribution. Gotta say, it kind of clashes a little bit with the blue. Um, but desktop themes and, and colors are like easy enough to change. Piece of cake. Um, in fact, let's have a look at the settings now and see how easy it would be. So, we've got a panel menu here. Now, panel menu. Uh, 
this is pro well, I think it's probably the first panel menu that we've seen uh, actually, and this is the third distribution. We've seen like what what can only re really be described as lenses in Unity, which just take up. It's almost like a panel, but it takes up the entirety of the desktop. And um, in XFCE and and uh, not XFCE in LXDE Lubuntu, the one that I talked about previous to this video. Um, that had just a very traditional menu system, which I'm a big, big fan of. If you know, it's keep it simple. Um, but anyway, this has the old panel one, not dissimilar to what you might see in, um, say, Windows 7, Windows Vista. Um, kind of has a little bit. It looks, it looks a little dated, but um, but again, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to be too hard on the old aesthetics again because you can change the system themes. It's easy enough. Um, you can of course use the old. Uh, let's see if it uses the window key. Right, so the window key, which I'm pressing now, which you can probably hear, uh, it doesn't actually open up with the menu. Well, if you right click, uh, applications menu, layout icon in a single panel row. Show generic application names. Ah, like, so you've got mail reader, file manager. Web, oh, web browser there for, for Firefox. Um, show application descriptions. There's a lot of text on there. You probably want to get rid of that. Show menu hierarchy. Position search entry next to panel button. Oh, right, there you go. Commands next to smaller. I icon size very small. Oh, that's okay. All right. So it gives you a lot of customization on the panel, uh, which is good. Switch categories by hovering. I'd of course have that on. So it just. I w what I would like to see really is to see the categories on the left hand side. It seems to be a little um, disjointed. I know it's a little thing, um, but these, you know, a menu, for example, is something that you're likely to use very regularly, dozens of times a day. And it just seems a little counterintuitive when you click on it and then you go over to the right and then you go back over to the left. It just seems like a little more movement, a little more dexterity, I guess, uh, is required. Um, favorites, display. Can we have the categories on the left-hand side? Not entirely sure. Anyway, there are a good number of customization options anyway. Um, what if, okay, so let's have a look at... Appearance. Let's see what we've got in the appearance options. So yeah, here we go. The appearance. Uh, you can change. What theme is that changing? Oh, that's nice. Okay, so the theme that that's changing, that's changing everything that's within inside the windows here. So this is what you call the GTK theme, which I'm assuming uh, um, XFCE still uses GTK. So you're you're having a look at the various sort of colours, I guess, but also. Um, Yeah, there's something a bit bit of a lighter theme there. Let's pull up an application. Let's pull up Firefox because everyone knows what Firefox looks like, what Firefox is supposed to look like, and um, and we'll see how the uh, how the th well actually Firefox might be a yeah Firefox is a bad example because it uses its own themes. What else have we got here then? Terminal emulator, Abbey Word. There we go. That uses GTK libraries. So. Um, Uh, that all looks pretty standard. It looks pretty light. Bluebird. Something a bit darker. Something a bit... Again, that looks a little bit uh, old school. Oh, this looks good. Um, is Grey... It was Greybird the one... I can't remember which is the one that we uh, we started out with now. So as you can see, some of these require like the borders to be uh, to be altered as well. Here we go. Um, is the uh, the icon theme of that? Yeah. So as you can see, um, there's the various icons. You can customize the icons there. You can have a look at the old fonts. Yeah. So it's all it's all sort of customization options you'd expect. I do. But there there are going to be a lot more, really. Um, let's have a look at the software bundle. Okay. So in accessories, we've got. Pretty much what you expect. Mouse pad, which is a nice lightweight text editor. Uh, a lot of um, accessibility options there. Games, interesting that they've included Mines and Sudoku, or Sudoku, in there as well. Just two games in the in the category there. But uh, you know, I guess if it uh, 
if, it, if, it, if it's what people want. You've got Simple Scan, which is a great program for scanning documents. Um, nice and straightforward. A lot of people I know who have in, uh, Simple Scan on their Linux distribution who aren't very tech savvy at all, they've actually had no problem whatsoever in using it to scan uh, stuff. So that works. GIMP Image Editor. Interesting that they've included this one because it wasn't included in Lubuntu, if I remember correctly. GIMP is a fantastic piece of um, software. Um, I guess I'm a little bit surprised when it's included. I, I use it, so I'm glad to see it included. But it does seem like a, a, a sizable piece of software. And also, almost a, a slight... Is it a specific piece of software? Um, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on whether or not pr perhaps should be included uh, in standard distributions down in the comment section below. Because, again, this is one of the things where I use GIMP quite a lot. Um, but then again, I use it for, for example, thumbnails on my YouTube videos and so forth. It's fantastic, it's easy, easy to use, and it's it's free. Um, w you know, in both in, in the Libre sense of the word and in the free beer sense of the word as well, which is incredibly useful. And a lot of people I know use it and, and, um, and get a lot of um, productivity out of it, really. Um, but yeah, I mean, just, to, just to, uh, as a piece of bundled software, I don't know. I guess maybe I see it as mildly... Uh, unusual because maybe it's something that not everyone uses. I mean, a lot, not a lot of people I know actually use GIMP unless they're involved in in some kind of uh, creative project. Um, okay, so internet, Firefox, you can never go wrong with Firefox. Uh, Pigeon Instant Messenger, again, that's pretty pretty useful. Thunderbird Mail, yeah, a good solid choice. Transmission, again, a good solid choice for BitTorrenting. Um, Again, these are full-featured programs, but nowadays with the overwhelming majority of machines being easily capable of running these uh, full programs with no side effects whatsoever, you know, no slowdown whatsoever, um, even in a, a, so a somewhat lightweight distribution like um, XFCE and Zubuntu, um, it doesn't necessarily have to sort of uh, only include, say, the more lightweight programs um, uh, in the sense that it used to maybe five years ago or whatever. Um, but then again, I think it always includes a, 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 Fire, a Firefox browser. Could be could be wrong there. Um, multimedia. You got your old GNOME-based stuff here. Now, Office. Now, i got to admit, I could have understood why they didn't include LibreOffice in uh, Lubuntu, the LXDE distribution, because... Um, it's quite sizable, in, you know, in terms of its. Uh, it fills up the CD quite a lot. It's it's a big uh, suite of programs, but um, and it also might possibly. I can see how it might cause slowdown on a lot of machines. Whereas something like Abbey Word it integrates with GTK libraries. It integrates with the uh, existing Linux setup really quite well. So you could understand how on lightweight distributions, Abbey Word being a perfectly good stand-in word processor if you want to save disk space on a CD and if you want to save system resources by using libraries which have already loaded in. LibreOffice um, could very well have been included here, actually. Maybe, possibly, even at the expense of GIMP, but I don't know. I'm going to assume that it's because of how much space on, on the CD and how much space in the actual downloaded distribution is the possible deciding factor on this one, rather than... Um, the use of system resources, but I could could easily be wrong on that one. Um, and again, Abbey Word, it's like most people I know do not use, like 90 plus, 90% 90 plus people I know do not use the advanced features on a word processor. They don't use the mail merge or, or the themes or the styles or anything like that. So Abbey Word being a... It's probably about as featured as Google Docs. And... Uh, the people I know who use Google Docs, again, use it for professional document making, management, all that kind of stuff. Um, and they have no problem with it. And I think this, this I would say, is about on a par with it in terms of features. Uh, minus, of course, the cloud and the sharing abilities and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it's even, yeah, it's even got, like, styles. So it's actually, it is quite full-featured. The only... Um, and again, my criticism of it is, is always the same, is that the default... Uh, the default file type is Abbey Word files, whereas it really ought to be Office Open XML. Um, but the uh, the Open Office type, uh, just to just to have some kind of solidarity in document formats in in uh, in the uh, open source world. That being said, because I can't, Im I could, I don't know, I can't imagine. LibreOffice supporting Abbey Word files, but then again, I could be wrong because OpenOffice does support a lot of files. Um, I'm just surprised. I would be surprised if Abbey Word sort of showed up on its radar. Um,
units an inch, yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm not entirely sure if it's possible to change that, but then again, still, Abbey Word, fine piece of uh, word processing uh, software there. Uh, so the bundle overall, XF Burn, uh, Pulse Audio, comes with the Pro Media Player. Gotta admit, don't have too much experience with that, but... Uh, But it seems like it does the job. And of course, in the install process, you can install third-party codecs and everything like that as well. Um, now, I can't remember, actually, if I did Zubuntu uh, the long-term support release six months ago. I don't think I did. I think I actually only covered Lubuntu LXDE, uh, much to my shame. But um, this doesn't seem to have moved on uh, in the past couple of years. That might sound like a bad thing coming out of my mouth, but it, in fact it isn't. Consistency and a solid um, direction that the distribution is moving in means that it will have very few drastic changes over the years. That's a good thing. It means it's reliable, it means it's stable, it means it's no, it knows what it's doing. So when I do reviews every six months about Ubuntu distributions, uh, and, and they tend to start sounding a little bit similar, that's by and large it's a good thing. It's, it's, it's really dangerous when a software distribution just makes drastic changes every six months it really really is dangerous it's uh, it's a bit like google one of the reasons I'm, I'm i'm quite frustrated with google at the moment because as a company they often um with very short notice will just shut down uh, a product that they're offering to the public with no sort of uh recourse and of course it, it being google and it being a free service you sort of don't really have any kind of right of complaint so um, but yeah, Google do that quite a lot, and that's 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 like how it affects me in, in terms of how irritating it can be. Uh, the most notable, of course, being Google Reader being shut down. Um, but also recently, they shut down their SMTP server and using their SMTP server uh, to send mail from, uh, which is you know, and, and I th they got rid of that like overnight without any warning, um, or at least you know nothing came across my desktop um, in regards to uh, to it. Um, it's a program. It's a problem that you can work around. No problem. I've got my own SMTP server that I that I rent. But um, but it would have been nice for a heads up, Google. Just saying. Anyway, rant over. Um, yeah, overall, good distribution. It's exactly what you can expect out of an XFCE-based distribution. It's exactly what you can expect out of a Zubuntu distribution. If you like XFCE, you'll no doubt like this. Um, if you are uh, into XFCE, um, you'll you'll know how to change the theme and make it look aesthetically pleasing. Uh, very few people I know keep the default theme who are using a Linux distribution for any length of time. Customization and and that kind of thing is it's it's almost like a core tenant of of Linux in general, and uh, and it's Part of the reasons why it's, um, uh, you know, it, it's part of the lighter and more fun aspects of, of uh, operating systems and distributions. So, that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you guys are a fan of XFCE and uh, Zubuntu, let me know some of your thoughts on it down in the comment section below. Because I've got to admit, I was a big fan of it back when I was at university. So, that was about um, 2008, 2009. Um, but I haven't really caught up with it too much since then. It, like I say, it looks pretty much the same five years on um, and that's that's a good that's a good thing it's reliable it's stable it knows what it's doing but let me know why perhaps you might choose XFCE why you think it's the uh, the user interface and the desktop environment for you it's always interesting to hear other people's perspectives on this kind of thing so that's about it for me today thank you very much for watching until next time I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome take care now so this is just the end slate, just to let you guys know uh, what other kind of projects I'm working on. For those of you that don't know, I have a, a second channel where I do more informal, casual type stuff. And I also have a gaming channel, so if you guys are into that kind of stuff, uh, you might want to check those out. Also, if you want to ask me any questions or just have a chat about whatever it is that I've been talking about in this video, feel free to check out my Twitter and my Tumblr as well. I spend a fair amount of time on them. Toodaloo!